it makes me a little bit emotional to think back of when I was a kid and the big dreams that I had. And uh, I think she would just be so proud, so proud. And a little bit overwhelmed. <laughs> My name is Diane Caldwell and I'm a player for FC Zurich. I fulfilled my two childhood dreams and this is my story. My two goals in my career was to play for Ireland in a final tournament, which we'd never qualified for yet until this past summer. And the other was to play for Man United. I was a big Man United fan and I grew up loving Manchester United and I had a shrine in my bedroom. So the shrine consisted of posters, well there was Man United wallpaper, but I don't know why I had wallpaper because the posters covered the wallpaper. And then I had a Man United duvet, um, bedding, uh, pillow, carpet was red, chair was red, lampshade Man United. Roy Keane and David Beckham were my big heroes back then, so they had a wall each. It was always just my dream to play football, um, you know, as a seven-year-old kid, I'm 35 now, so you can do the maths. Um, you know, I think I just thought I was going to play with the boys. Uh, you know, there was no female role models for me. There was no women's professional football on the TV that you could watch. I did write letters to a handful of English clubs when I was maybe 12 years old or around that age. So it was just basically when I was probably planning my future, you know, where am I going to play, what am I going to do, is there women's teams out there. I just set about writing letters and I, I took out my, my pen and my paper and I wrote to a bunch of big clubs in England saying, do you have a women's team? And they wrote back and they sent me little information packets or a football program of the women's team and they explained that they did or that they didn't have a team. Yeah, I had a whole collection of answers stashed in a shoebox. As a professional and going through my career, Man United didn't even have a women's team. So I really didn't think I would even have a chance to fulfill that. And then when they established themselves a couple of years ago, I, they were in the, the championship, the second division in England. And as soon as they formed, I was onto my agent, can you get me to this club? Can you get me to this club? And he was like, Diane, it will be a step down from where you are because they're in the, the league below the top division. And I don't care, I want to play for that club. It doesn't matter what it takes. And, you know, we, we harassed them every year, every season. Then an opening came about through a lot of injuries. They have had an injury plagued season and um, I was available. So they, they signed me. Proud to have made it and to wear that jersey is like no other feeling, you know, when you're a little girl and you go put on your Man United jersey to go out and play with the boys on the green, to then be in a dressing room putting on that jersey but actually going out and playing a real game, it's, it's unbelievable. I remember I was in transition year in my high school in Ireland and one, we had a project to do and I think it was open themed. And what I did was researching the Women's World Cup. Is there one, you know? And I think I still have also that project at home somewhere underneath the bed. And I just researched, got on a computer, and I pulled up all of this information from the Women's World Cup from 91, I think it started. And, you know, all of the winners, the finals, Norway, USA, obviously then the dominance of Germany. And that was my project. So, I, you know, you kind of had to research it. It wasn't just on the TV, on the news, on the radio. It was something you had to <laughs> dig deep into the archives. Ireland had qualified for their first ever major tournament. And it was the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. So I, I played for the national team for a very long time. And to always have that as your end goal, and you know, always falling short year after year, campaign after campaign. It's, it's tough and it takes its toll and you wonder, will we ever get there? Are we good enough? Can we ever achieve something so big? And then to get not only to the, a tournament, but for it to be the World Cup was just absolutely phenomenal. It was something that I and the team have worked towards um, over the last number of years.
What would the seven-year-old Diane think of the 35-year-old Diane now? That's a really tough question to answer. Um, it makes me a little bit emotional to think back of when I was a kid and the big dreams that I had. And uh, I think she would just be so proud, so proud and a little bit overwhelmed <laughs> as I'm feeling now. Um, now I think uh, she would be just so happy that she got to do what she loved.